In our politics lead, the Justice Department's watchdog, Inspector General, will now investigate what very well appears to be a chilling potential abuse of power at the direction of former Attorney General Bill Barr under then-President Donald Trump. Sources tell CNN that Trump's Department of Justice went to great lengths to secretly subpoena data from Apple to get phone and email records from more than 100 accounts, the targets, key members of Congress, including two Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee, Chairman Adam Schiff and Congressman Eric Swalwell, both from California, and those are just the ones we know about. The motive is to track down sources behind news reports that revealed contacts between Trump associates and Russian officials. We learned just this week of similar efforts that targeted reporters at The Washington Post, The New York Times, and here at CNN. So just how egregious was all of this? Let's bring in two former Department of Justice voices. Elliot Williams was the Deputy Assistant Attorney General for Legislative Affairs in the Obama administration. Bill Burke was a federal prosecutor and is now lead counsel for Trump White House lawyer Don McGahn at Quinn Emanuel uh, Law Firm. Thanks to both of you for being here, appreciate it. So Elliot, it's not unusual for the Department of Justice to pursue subpoenas for data, but it is unusual to do that for members of Congress, right? It is incredibly unusual to do it for members of Congress and particularly to do it for members of Congress when the president has been so explicit about the need to go after his political opponents. Now look, certainly members of Congress can engage in wrongdoing and can mishandle information and can potentially uh, get caught up in criminal liability. And if they do, they should be investigated and prosecuted. The problem is that President Trump had a long track record of even identifying Adam Schiff by name. You know, February 25th, 2020, there's a press conference in India and says Adam Schiff is out here leaking. We need to, you know, investigate Adam Schiff and so on. And so um, you know, even though it's, it's incredibly uncommon um, and it's par for the course for President Trump. So, Bill, Apple publicly shares how often the U.S. government makes requests for its data, which didn't begin under Trump, we should note. But in the first six months of 2018, when the Department of Justice was going after Schiff and Swalwell, Apple had requests for nearly 2,400 of its accounts. The requests more than doubled in Apple's last report. It's the metadata that the Department of Justice is going after. Um, which is not the content of the emails, or the content of the phone calls or voicemails, but who was talking to who and when and where. Um, what is the bar for making such a request? Because I would think, and maybe I'm wrong, that it would be kind of high, but it sounds like maybe it isn't actually all that high. Well, it should be very high. Um, and I think that just as, you know, as people have been saying, the, the fact that they're going after the Democrats um, isn't of, in and of itself a problem if there's actual proof of a crime, if there's actually some kind of leak coming from the, the, from the congressman, from the, the... But would they need to know that first? Would they need to... Let, let, let me just invent something. Congressman Smith, let's say, okay? Would they need to say, we have evidence Congressman Smith talked to this reporter two days before this broke, therefore let's search for his metadata? Or is it more of a fishing expedition? I hate... Congressman Smith, let's search his metadata. Well, the thing about subpoenas is that subpoenas really don't have the same kind of level of protection that a search warrant has. Subpoenas are actually pretty much, pretty commonly used. But as you've said, the point is, in a particular case like this, especially when you're looking at reporters and metadata and when you're looking at congressman uh, metadata, it really should be a very high standard. The standard is really left to the discretion of the department and the internal rules of the department, and that's very hard for anybody to actually penetrate. And particularly with reporters, when you're going after reporter metadata, that really cuts to the very core of the First Amendment and it really raises very significant doubts about what the basis would be because obviously the, the, what the effect is going to be is that you're going to have a massive chilling effect on reporters. I think the congressman and the, the intelligence committee is different because I think the question there is what was the intent yeah. of the investigators? Did, were they really going after a leak or were they had, did they have political motivations? With reporters, I don't see any justification forever going after their metadata, except in some extraordinary circumstance. Right, but as you noted, if it's left to the discretion of the Justice Department, if then you're leaving things to the discretion of prosecutors, I mean, I wouldn't want to leave anything to the discretion of prosecutors. But I want to play this sound, because according to Politico today, Elliot, yeah. uh, Barr said he didn't know about a leak investigation into lawmakers. He says Trump didn't know. But a moment in his testimony from 2019 when he was being confirmed stands out. This is then-Senator, now Vice President Kamala Harris, questioning Barr. Take a listen. Right. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh... Yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that question? I will repeat it. Yeah. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. 
Um, the president or anybody else. Seems you would remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, uh, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation, but... Perhaps they've suggested? I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted? I, I don't know. Inferred? You don't know. That's certainly interesting in retrospect, and given the fact that this seemed to have started under Attorney General Sessions and was uh, continued by Barr, uh, I mean, you could see why he might give an answer like that. Does he face any legal repercussions? No, no, legal repercussions, no. But look, the, there's one answer to that question uh, in a functioning government, and the answer has to be no. The President of the United... Even though the Justice Department is installed by the President of the United States, it operates independently of him. And if the... You need to be able to say, as Attorney General of the United States, no, the President hasn't ever asked me that. The idea that he just doesn't have a recollection of it raises questions, and it falls to Congress having oversight authority of the the Justice Department to ask the questions now and bring him back there. You know, they can, he can come voluntarily and they can ask him, uh, even before you get to the question of subpoenaing the testimony, ask him to come, negotiate over it, and then bring him in. Uh, Bill, uh, final thoughts? You know, I think that the key issue here, I, I, you know, Attorney General Barr said that he wasn't aware of uh, the investigation of the, of the congressman. Yeah. I take him at his word on that. Uh, I think that he is, he's gone on the record to say that, you know, this was not something that he uh, knew about. You know, the question of uh, prosecutorial discretion is the key issue, just as you've raised. As a defense lawyer, that's what I do all the time. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. The vast majority of prosecutors, they exercise this discretion well. I may not agree with it. I might think it's wrong. I might have clients who I think are being mistreated. But at the end of the day, they do it the right way. And the question here, especially the way that this was done, going after reporters, going after potential pe people who are potentially political enemies, uh, that is a real problem. So I think that that's where discretion has to be reined in. It would never be, the, I, we're, we're going to yeah. differ with you a little bit, it would never be the case that a member of Congress would be investigated and the Attorney General wouldn't be briefed on it. That's yeah. inconceivable. Elliot Williams, Bill Burke, thanks to both of you. Appreciate it.